In an earlier YouTube, I told the story about the mysterious case of the missing blue fish. This fish had been the most abundant and important fish in Lake Erie, and it was found ranging into Lake Huron and Lake Ontario as well. And then it suddenly disappeared. That was part A of the story. Part B of the story was that blue fish, answering to the same description, started popping up in smaller lakes all over the northern states in Canada. How could all of this be reconciled? That is what we're trying to investigate, and I'm here to give you an update. In that earlier video, I brought together facts from fishermen who'd had direct practical experience with either of the two sets of blue fish. I brought forward scientific information of what was known about both sets of blue fish. Then I put on my thinking hat and speculated about what had happened with the disappearing Lake Erie bluefish and the appearing bluefish of the northern states and Canada. After that, I heard from hundreds of people in the US and Canada, many of them fishermen, with lots of facts and ideas about these fish. According to fishermen, it was steely gray blue or dark gray blue. It was smaller on average than yellow walleye, a deep water fish. It had slightly larger eyes mounted higher on its head. It had no white tip on its caudal or pelvic fins, and they considered it to be its own unique species. Here's an illustration of the fish. There don't seem to be photos of the fish because back then, people didn't have their cameras as handy as they do these days. Note the absence of white tips on the caudal fin and the pelvic fin. What did they call this fish? Fishermen called it at least six different names, which makes it very challenging when you're trying to research or talk about this fish. The three most common names were blue pike, blue walleye, or blue pickerel. Now you may decide to call it whatever is most common in your region so that people know what you're talking about. But for me, a biology prof talking to everybody at once, I'm always going to pick blue walleye. And here's why. The blue mystery fish is not a pike or a pickerel in terms of its physical or genetic characteristics. It's not even a member of the pike family. Furthermore, some actual pike are showing blue coloration these days, which just adds to the confusion. The blue mystery fish is a member of the perch family in terms of its genetic and physical characteristics, and it's a dead ringer for the yellow walleye, except that it's smaller and a different color. In the eyes of science, yellow walleye and blue walleye are the same species, Sander vitreus, although Troutman in 1981 thought that they might be different subspecies, vitreous in the case of yellow walleye and glaucus in the case of blue walleye. Then in 2014, Haponsky and Stepien did a massive study in which they determined that yellow walleye and blue walleye were the exact same species. They looked at 1,181 yellow and blue walleyes and determined that blue walleyes were not a separate species, not even a separate subspecies, they were just a different variety of yellow walleye. Some people have said, how can they be the same species when they have such visible differences? But think about this. All over the world, there are different groups of people with distinctive heights, hair colors, skin colors, eye colors, distinctive facial features, and so on. And yet we're all the same species, homo sapien. When we're talking about humans, we use terms like race. When we're talking about fish, we use terms like variety. The fact that they're both the same species is good news because it means that no species has gone extinct taking its genes with it. Since blue walleyes were just a variety of yellow walleyes, their genes are probably still in the larger population of yellow walleyes, just waiting to be recombined and expressed under the right conditions. But that's just speculation until it happens. Now let's look at three ideas I suggested in the last video that blue walleyes could return to Lake Erie, and we'll bring those ideas up to date. In thinking about how Lake Erie blue walleye might return to Lake Erie one day, I speculated that maybe they're somewhere in the giant Great Lakes or its tributary systems like the Deepwater Sculpin. That was a reference to the fact that the Deepwater Sculpin went missing at about the same time as the Lake Erie blue walleye and was gone for years, but it must have been hiding somewhere in Lake Ontario's tributary system because it's made a return there and built up to decent numbers. Maybe one day it will return to Lake Erie as well. In your YouTube comments and emails to me, you reported multiple people catching blue walleyes since 1983 and right up to the present time in the Great Lakes. In particular, in Lake Erie, Niagara River, Lake St. Clair, tributaries of Lake Erie, and Lake Superior. And other people besides our group were reporting them from Lake Ontario. Hmm, a blue walleye caught in Lake Erie? Could that be a Lake Erie blue walleye? And could fishermen be wrong when they have the fish actually in hand and know what they're looking for? Hmm, makes me wonder, are there small scattered blue walleye populations still in the Great Lakes? 
Let's refresh on how you would know a Lake Erie Blue Walleye to see one. Well, it would be steely gray blue or dark gray blue. It would be smaller on average than a yellow walleye, a deep water fish. It would have slightly larger eyes mounted higher on its head, and it would have no white tips on its caudal or pelvic fins. To this, scientists have added, yellow walleyes would max out at greater than 27 inches, whereas blue walleyes would be less than 20 inches. Yellow walleyes would likely be less than 50 feet deep. Blue walleyes could be deeper, down to 100 feet deep. Yellow walleyes would spawn in 2 to 15 feet of water in April May. Blue walleyes would spawn later and deeper. Yellow walleyes would use shallow gravel bars, shorelines, and tributaries. Blue walleyes would be offshore in the eastern and central basins. Yellow walleyes have smaller eyes. There would be room for another eye and a half before reaching the end of the snout. Blue walleyes have larger eyes. There would only be room for one more eye before reaching the end of the snout. Yellow walleyes have smaller eyes mounted lower on the head. A third eye would not quite fill the gap between the other two eyes viewed from above. Blue walleyes have larger eyes mounted higher on the head. A third eye would broadly overlap the other two eyes when viewed from above. When future bluefish are caught, I'd like to ask the following questions. What was the exact color of the fish in some detail? In what month was the fish caught? What was the length of the fish? Was there white on the caudal fin? Was there a different size and placement of the eyes? Was there blue mucus on the scales? Where was it caught? Do you know the depth at which it was caught? Was it caught with yellow walleye or with blue walleye? The second idea I speculated about was that maybe the blue walleye population had been assimilated by the much larger yellow walleye population, in which case you would expect that yellow traits would often cover the blue traits, but that there could be visible hybrids with intermediate traits and every now and again, there would be some blue fish from matings between hybrid parents. The old time fishermen had plenty of blue walleyes and yellow walleyes, and they were also familiar with hybrids, which they described as grays in reference to their intermediate color, jumbos in reference to the fact that hybrids tend to be larger than you would otherwise expect, and mules in reference to the idea that a horse mated with a donkey results in a hybrid offspring, a mule. Further with this idea, you reported walleyes of intermediate color, blue walleyes, and fish with unusual eyes, all of which support this idea. And it makes you wonder, when there are enough blue variants, will they again be schooling and prospering in the depths? About fish with unusual eyes, I was telling you that yellow walleye have relatively small eyes, and so there'd be room for another eyeball and a half before the end of their snouts, whereas a blue walleye has relatively large eyes, and so there'd only be room for one more eyeball before the end of its snout. I was telling you that in terms of body proportions because you might not have a fine instrument with you in the field with which to take measurements. Similarly, I think you could look down on a yellow walleye or a blue walleye and imagine whether or not a third eyeball would fit between the other two eyeballs with or without overlap. However, it would be trickier with hybrids. In that case, it would be handy to have a caliper there with which to take accurate measurements. When future fish are caught, I'd like to ask the same set of questions with perhaps different expectations. What was the color of the fish in some detail? What month was it caught in? What was the length of the fish? Was there white on the caudal fin? Were there a different size and placement of the eyes? Was there blue mucus on the scales? Where was it caught in the lake? Do you know the depth? And was it with yellow walleye or with blue walleye? The third idea I speculated about was what happened to the Lake Erie blue walleye fry that were stocked into smaller lakes. It's a fact that some fry were stocked into various small lakes here and there, but people seem to have forgotten where. You reported a number of interesting things, but one in particular caught my interest. It was about a small but very deep lake in which there were blue walleyes that were very different from yellow walleyes in the surrounding area. Lake Erie blue walleye fry were rumored to have been stocked locally, but we don't know where, and this particular lake seems to have been forgotten about. It's small and it's grown up around by a forest. We're lacking official confirmation on this, but we're going to try to get some genetic testing done. And if it turns out that there were some Lake Erie blue walleye fry put in that lake, should we try and restock some to Lake Erie or leave them where they are? Let me know in the comments. When future fish are caught, I'd like to ask the same set of questions, but then some additional questions about the lake itself. So additional questions being, is the lake 
particularly deep? Is it clear enough that light could penetrate, or is there a lot of algae in the way? Is there a background color that the fish could be adapting to? And what is the color of the gut contents? In wrapping up part A, there might be three different ways in which the Lake Erie blue walleye could return to the lake. They might already be there or elsewhere in the Great Lakes in small remnant populations. They might be hidden in the yellow walleye gene pool, ready to reclaim deep water as it becomes more available in the future. Or they might be restocked from other smaller lakes where they were put for safety in the 60s and 70s. Now let's consider part B, blue colored walleyes being caught in smaller northern lakes. I'm aware that there are blue colored walleyes also being caught south of Lake Erie, but I don't have as much information on those fish so let's focus on the northern fish today. Blue colored walleyes are being caught in northern lakes and people are saying, blues are back. These fish are walleyes and they're blue, but they're big. They have white tips on their fins and they have eyes like yellow walleyes. Dr. Wayne Schaefer and others found that these were regular walleyes that were missing yellow color. In other words, they had whitish bodies. Walleyes in northern lakes secrete a protein called sandrocyanin, which protects them from UV light which can be quite intense at northern latitudes. It looks blue on whitish bodies, and it looks green on yellowish bodies. The good news of all this is that walleyes are adaptable to different circumstances, and you can catch blue walleyes right now. But they're not the real blue walleyes of Lake Erie. The blue mucus can be scraped off their scales. I'll be calling them blue-colored walleyes. Note that some pike, perch, and bass are also showing bluish color and mucus. So the evidence is in. These northern fish are not the same as Lake Erie blue walleyes. They are yellow walleyes in terms of their physical traits and their genetic traits. Haponsky and Stepkins tested them. But they produce blue mucus in response to UV light and some of them at least lack yellow pigment. Your findings so far are as follows. You've been catching many blue colored walleyes in many northern lakes and rivers. Also, some people have been catching them south of Lake Erie, but I don't know much about that, so tell me more. You've been catching them with and without blue mucus, but look carefully because it can be subtle at some times of the year. Some people have mentioned white on the body or white on caudal fin, would like to know more. Different sizes and placement of eyes, haven't heard anything about that, might not be relevant in these cases, but take a look at it. Where are they caught, when, and depth, some people are telling me. Is the lake deep? Is it clear? Meaning not much algae so that the light can penetrate? Is there background color that's relevant? Some people have mentioned that, and some people have mentioned, a few people have mentioned gut contents with color that might be relevant. So tell me more, I'd like to know more about all of that. A very interesting study has been done by three Canadian researchers, Laporte, Magnin, and Angers. They looked at six northern lakes, and they found that there were both yellow and blue walleyes in those lakes. The fish of a given lake were strongly related to each other, much more so than to fish of other lakes. So they reasoned on the basis of that, that the blue color must have developed independently in each lake. And that's very interesting because it implies that blue populations have developed from yellow populations many times. The fish were now schooling in separate populations, which they would have to do in order for the blue populations and yellow populations to both be viable. Thinking back to Lake Erie, it makes you realize that walleye populations do have the capacity to develop blue coloration. And it's not outrageous to speculate that blue walleyes could be back in Lake Erie again through various means. Blue adaptation of Lake Erie walleyes is not likely a response to sunlight because there's too much algae in the water to let the sunlight penetrate very far. But it could be a response to depth and darkness. There's so much more to know about that. Fishermen have the capacity to help solve this. There are millions of fishermen in the Great Lakes area out there enjoying their sport. So if they'll just jot down some of this information in a simple questionnaire that I'll put in the more section below and email it to me, I will do summaries periodically and post them at YouTube. Here's a quick look at the form that summarizes the questions I asked earlier in the video. I've got it all typed up for you. Can fishermen provide some answers? Yes, they can, and I hope they will. See you next video.